<clears throat> Philippians. Let me find out where I was at actually here. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> now Paul, <clears throat> this is just one example here in Philippians where he's, he's detailing these problems, okay? So let's look at uh, verse, starting at verse 1 again. If there be, I mean, he's pleading, if there be any consolation, in, any comfort in Christ, if you've received any comfort in Christ, yourself, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any tender mercies from God, any compassions, fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, the same thing you got from God, have the same thing towards other. Fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Notice um, that he's pointing that towards the brethren, one accord, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. That means how you treat one another. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look, not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. This kind of mind. And he begins to describe it, but he's describing this thing of being of one accord, one mind. Have that same mind. Be of one mind, and that mind is the mind of Christ. And so, so he proceeds to, he, he's detailed the problems, and now he proceeds to give the actual answer. He says to the church, this is the answer to let the nature, the attitudes of Christ, the mindset of Christ be in you. That's what he's setting forth as the answer. All right. Now, many times, well, let me just say, say it like this. The church, uh, for the most part, believers, for the most part, they usually seek to fix things. They want to fix things. That's just a real deal with the church. I've seen over and over, we want to, we want to fix everything. And, and, you know, sometimes we want to do that with doctrine or this or that, but we want to fix that. Okay, you got a problem, I want to fix it. You know, and um, I mean, I'm just thinking off the cuff here, but, you know, sometimes God's dealing with people and he wants them to come to a conclusion. You know, the answer I use is when I was missionary in Jamaica and we were, I was responsible for <clears throat> one of the many responsibilities, but one of them was to take care of the chicken so that we had eggs, you know and that, that we had upcoming more chickens and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, so when the time came when they started hatching out, you know, the first one, the f I heard it, you know, pecking away at that shell on the inside of the thing, you know. And I'm going, oh, man, I'm going to get my first chicken, you know. It's going to be the first one. And, you know, and he kept pecking and pecking. And, I mean, this just went on and on and on. Finally, I said, I'm going to help him, you know. So I cracked the egg. And he came out and he died shortly after that because he needed all of that pecking. He needed to use his strength. He needed to build up something so that he could survive in the world. And I broke him out of it before he was ready. <clears throat> Typical Christian thing that we do all the time. People are going through stuff. We never check with the Lord. We assume the Lord wants us to fix them. And, <clears throat> and it's not true. God... You know, God is God, first of all. Jesus is Father. He's a Father. I mean, the, the Father is Father, sorry. And Jesus is Lord, and on and on. You know, you look at all of the names and all of the titles of the reality that is God, and you go, you know, really, he probably ought to be able to handle this without me all the time. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I look at it. It's like, you know, if, he's, if the Father is a Father, and Jesus is Lord, and they're God... Why do they need me running around going, oh, oh, you got a problem? Well, here, let me fix you. Let me, let me do this. Let me do that. Well, you know, we always grab our Bible. And we go, you know, well, the Bible says that you need to, or if you would, have you been praying? Or have you been in the Word lately? Or da, 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 da. And I'm not against any of that, but I am against that if it's us trying to fix things instead of just being led of the Lord and led by the life of the Lord. 
that you following what I'm saying? That, that there's something wrong with this mentality that we have to fix everything. It's okay. Sometimes it's good for people to go through a real mess and the truth is you don't know how it'll come out. We go, well, if I intervene, it'll come out good. Really? Really? So you're the answer to all mankind. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But some of you have been around a while. Y'all remember way back when we were on Maple Street, I resigned as the general manager of the universe. You remember that? Came up, stood before the church and said, I just, I resigned. <laughs> You know, because I was trying to fix everything. <clears throat> and, you know, if you're a pastor, a shepherd, you care about the sheep. But you have to watch out and make sure that that care is not you and it is the Lord. You know, that's the purpose of the cross, is of the death, is to get rid of what is hurtful, even if it appears good, you know. <clears throat> and to allow Christ to live in us and to allow the Holy Spirit to, to initiate what needs to be initiated. <clears throat> All right? So, um, <clears throat> there is, at the same time <clears throat> that there is this fix-it mentality, there seems to be sort of a lack of understanding that the real answer to things is to bring them into something greater of the Lord. Something greater of the Lord. Now, what I mean by that is an increase of Christ. <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> and what I mean by that is not just make them more spiritual. Your best bet, sorry, here we go. Your best bet is to make them dead. And I, I don't mean you kill them. I mean, that, have them understand the death of the cross. You know what I mean? <clears throat> because most of the problems that they're having and that, that, that are going on are usually because flesh is intervening, even if it's trying to be sweet. You know, I remember uh, one of my first trips in Ireland, and, and Michael Finnegan and I were sitting there talking, and, and uh, <clears throat> he, was, he was talking about, some guy that was preaching that was there in Ireland from the United States, and he said, oh, man, he's just the, uh, the sweetest, sweetest man you'd ever see. He just, everything about him is just sweet. And he said, but you know, all sweets can't be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, boy, you're right. You're sure right, you know. <clears throat> and that doesn't mean, well, I'm going to act mean. It, it, it means it's Christ, you understand? Because sometimes he'll deal with you, and sometimes he'll just comfort you when you, you least expect it, you know, when you think, I don't deserve it. But you don't know the right time and the right, you don't. We don't, we don't know anything. We're the body, the, the mind is in the head, not holding the head, from whom all, remember, that last class in Colossians? <clears throat> and so, um, there is this reality that light chases away darkness. And that if, um, you know, if, if the enemy is coming in, the, the, the prince of darkness is coming in and he's attacking, usually all we think about is, you know, I need the power of God. But there is this understanding that instead of fixing something with power, I, I will fix you, I will fix this situation, you turn on the light, which is Christ. You increase the light and the darkness flees. This fix it thing, for example, I was thinking about this earlier. <clears throat> Jesus dying on the cross, and you got, you got two different guys hanging there on either side of him. And one of them <clears throat> is, um, he's freaking out at Jesus. He's going, you know, if you're the son of God, or we can say, well, if Jesus is the son of God, then he ought to get me out of this problem, right? I mean, anybody ever said that? Well, he's the son of God. He ought to get me out of this problem. He says to Jesus, if you're the son of God, then you need to bring us down from these crosses. You need to get us off this cross. You need to fix the problem. 
Now, do we really need to let a guy like that off of the cross and turn him loose back on the multitude again? <laughs> you know, but that's his spirit and that's his attitude. You know, it's like, you know, the, but it's, an, it's a mentality that you, Jesus, if you're God, if you're the son of God, I'm in a predicament here. It doesn't matter what your predicament is. It can be any number, you know what I mean? It's all different for everybody else. All we know is we're uncomfortable with it. I don't like this. This is this cross is not comfortable. They didn't put a pillow behind my head, you know, whatever, you know. And so he's 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 blame. He's 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 got this attitude towards Jesus because you're not fixing it. That's his problem right there. Is how he was trained to think. The other guy. The other guy says, look, I deserve this. You know, you see this? You see my cross here? I earned this. I did all the things wrong that put me here. And he's talking to this other guy on the cross, and he says, but he, this man never did anything wrong. And, and he's looking to Jesus just to be with him. He's just being with Jesus where Jesus is at. Instead of trying to get Jesus to be with us where we're at. And Jesus is definitely, uh, can I say, appreciates the approach. <laughs> and he says, this day you'll be with me in paradise. We'll be one. Okay, <clears throat> now this doesn't give a lot of answers practically it, it will work out practically, but it doesn't answer our questions and our fears in our mind. But an increase of Christ, uh, an increase in our union with Christ, an increase of light will deal with the darkness in your life. Okay. Now, when we put it in the terms I've just put it, <clears throat> it's, it's almost like theology. I mean, because, you know, but it is the truth. If you're, if you're only seeking Jesus to fix your predicament, you're out of whack with him, even though you think, well, you're, you're, you know, this is what he wants me to do. But if you're seeking an increase of Christ, you're seeking an increase of union with the crucified, God's going to take care of you. <laughs> if you seek to save yourself, you're going to lose. You give up your life for my sake and the gospel, you're in, baby. I think that's what Paul said, wasn't it? <laughs> what he said, you're in, baby. All right. So, <clears throat> so light chases darkness. Amen? <clears throat> you already know that, you know, Theologically and uh, electricitically and astrophysically, you already know it on all these planes. You know that 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 that. I mean, I with the upbringing that I had, some of the some of the nights that I went into with my stepfather and my mom drinking and all this stuff, and and uh, they'd be fighting and breaking stuff all over the house and yelling at the top of their lungs and screaming. And as a little boy, I would lay there and I'd just cry, just wanting that to be over with. And I, my deepest prayer, <laughs> funny, my deepest prayer was that the sun would come up. Because every time the sun, I didn't know much, I was just a little kid, but I knew when the sun came up, it got quiet again. <laughs> and all of that would end. And I, <clears throat> and so I would just lay there and I'd just go, oh Lord, please, you know, it's almost like <laughs> Joshua, make the, make the sun move faster on the other side. There, there we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> but in reality, even in my mind then, I wasn't. I don't even remember thinking fix them. I just remember saying I just wish light would increase. You know, 
I mean, I was just a kid. I didn't know anything. I'm not saying it was super spiritual or whatever, but I just knew that was the answer for me. But it is the answer uh, in the solar system. It is the answer in a room when you walk into a dark room and you start bumping your knees and your shins all over everything and you're trying to find a way around and fall down and boom, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, somebody goes, why don't you just turn on the light? You know, you turn it on and go, ah, you know. And all the obstacles are seen for what they are. Golly, folks. Much of the problems, much of the things we're bumping into, much of the things we're fighting with, we fight because we're in the darkness of the situation and we're not in asking to increase the light. We want the darkness gone or we want the obstacles in the darkness. And if you see them correctly as the Holy Spirit would open your eyes, you wouldn't be as afraid of them and you would know how to traverse through them with the Lord, he wouldn't take you out of it. He'd just be with you in it, and, and he would be the light, and you'd walk in the light of life. But we have a fix-it mentality. I, I just want you to take away everything in the room and make it where I can walk in darkness without problems. <laughs> you know? Just fix all the, the darkness problems, the problems of in the darkness, and let me just be ignorant as a stone. You know, it's okay. I'm not, you know, I don't need much. I just need you to fix everything in the world that would trouble me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, folks, we know this stuff theologically. But I fear, I'm just speaking honestly right now, I fear that many of us, when we get into practical situations, our first thought is not, you know what, I just need to get my eyes on Jesus. I need to see Jesus in this. And, and, yet, and yet, probably everybody in this room and probably everybody on Skype has at one time or another been facing some really bad things and something happened and you got in the Word or you got with the Lord and man, you got, and, and that time with the Lord just, energized you and the darkness didn't go away and nothing was fixed but you were okay. Anybody experienced that ever before? <clears throat> well, what was that? Just it was, it was that a principle that you could live by or was that an experience? But now, I, you know, that was an experience then but now I need him to clear out the, the junk. I need to fit, I need him to fit, you know, with that guy on the cross. I need you to fix this situation. If you're the son of God, get me out of this. See? And that's why I say, we, you know, we, we know this, that light chases darkness. So did the Philippians. And Paul's having to write about Christ crucified. He's saying, let's increase Christ crucified. Let's do that. Let, let's, instead of taking away all of the people that are being mean to you or being prideful or being this or that or unforgiving or all of the things and all the attitudes you're dealing with, it's interesting. He's not trying to do something in them to get them through problems. He's, try, he's saying, you no longer be part of the problem. You be Christ crucified. You have the mind of Christ. When somebody would slap you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Well, it's a great scripture, but, you know, somebody really does that. Or, or because people really do do that, folks, but it's not a physical slap. It's something they said or did, something that hurt you, something that was, was not fair. Lord, get me out of this. You're the son of God. Get me out of this situation. And he's saying, look, the best way to get you out of this situation is get you over here on my cross. My cross is to the glory of God. We're not being murdered over here. We're laying down our life. We are sacrifices for God. Come on, join me. And the other guy does. This day you'll be with me where I am. It's glorious. This other guy's going, no, man, that, that doesn't work. Nothing's happening with that. I need you to fix all of them. Paul, 
Paul's talking to people that were like that. And he's saying, look, I don't know about everybody else. I don't know about the church at Galatia that's giving you <laughs> problems, you poor Philippians. Not that that was it. I'm just making something up here. But, you know, that church over there messing with you or doing something like that. But I'm calling upon you to let this mind be in you. And you be the answer. Christ in you. Christ crucified in you. Okay. <clears throat> that, what I just described, is a stupid answer if you don't see correctly. If you don't have the light on, you're going you're gonna to go, you know, you're going to still bump into stuff and go, well, that's stupid. There has to be an increase of Christ. There has to be an increase of the light. There has to be a seeing of things the way God sees them. And if you see them that way, then life is, is not unfair. Life is an opportunity to live Christ and to glorify the Father by Christ crucified. That's an opportunity. How many people miss opportunities every day? All the time. We all do. And it's sad. It's really, really sad in light of the truth, okay? You know, <clears throat> take it outside of that and just go, well, you know, <clears throat> I feel, you know, I feel bad for you. You, you understand what I'm saying here? I, you take it outside of the truth of Christ I'm crucified, and then I just have to go, well, I know, I feel bad for you. It's a shame that people are so mean. And let me just pray for you that you can somehow make it through this without having to be with Jesus on his cross. And, you know, let's just shun the Lord right now and pray. And, <laughs> you know, and, and maybe you'll get some comfort. And here, let me just pet your flesh. That's really, you know, that's the only way you're going to get through this is that if you're not confronted at all with the truth, is that really what we want? You know, I mean, you know, don't you just love Brother Paul? Don't you just love this guy? Because he just, he just shot straight, man. He didn't, he, he's, because this is the truth. Remember, we talked about the difference between doctrine and the truth. And this is the truth. And he's just going, look, this is the truth. This is the only truth there is. This is the truth of God. If you want it, here it is. Come and get it. Wait a minute, that's a song. Anyway. <clears throat> um, and so he just said, okay, look. It's like this. He goes, look, it's not 80 million things, 80 million doctrines that you've got to figure out. It all pointed to the cross. Every sacrifice they ever did that carried them all the way through the wilderness and all the way through into the promised land and everything, constantly offering up lamb to God and the Lamb satisfying them. We were sinners. We messed up. And not just sinners. This was the people of God, Israel. The people of God. They weren't going, we're sinners. They're going, in truth, here, let me offer this. Because I'm not that. That's spotless. That Lamb is spotless. I'm, even if it's not a sin issue, I'm not that. So I give you that. Okay. Well, guess what? This is the fulfillment of it. Now, we're all priests. Can I get an amen? amen? New Testament priests. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means we all can preach. No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's not what that means. We're all preachers. You know, we all can minister. Yeah, you can all minister, but what did a priest minister? It ministered lamb to satisfy God. So now we're all priests, but the altar is our heart, and through us we offer the, the Christ crucified to the Father, and he smells the sweet, that's what it says, is he smells the sweet fragrance, the sweet savor of Christ, and he's pleased and satisfied with Jesus. That's what being a New Testament priest is. You know, I've heard, I, I shouldn't get off on it at all, even to, Get, but I, you wouldn't believe the junk I have heard over the years, 40 years of, 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 of being around people that talk about being 
what, what it means to be a priest. And it doesn't include sacrifice at all. And it doesn't include a lamb at all. And it doesn't include the fact that whatever we offer up is the only thing God will accept. We're too busy running around offering up, here, I want to give you my CDs, and I want to give you this, and I want to, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here's my cigarettes, you know, and God's going, oh, thanks, you know. <laughs> I've been needing some of them. <laughs> and we think, and we think, but I mean, we think that the, we really did something, man. I gave God my cigarettes. You know, like he's really, you know, you got any other junk down there you want to throw up here? And we think all that is spiritual. He's wanting his son. If, if by the spirit of Christ you could give him your cigarettes or, the, or your CDs or whatever, if you can do it by the spirit of Christ, it's not those things that he's going, oh, this is great. I really like this guy, that he's, the way he sings, you know. I'll play this CD in heaven. <laughs> I, I like country. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, George Strait? Yeah, he, he's going to be here. <laughs> he's a Texas boy. <laughs> Him and Willie, yeah. <laughs> Get all them Texas boys up here. <clears throat> All right, we're off track. <laughs> the point being, there's only one thing God has ever received as a sacrifice, folks, and that was a lamb, and that's Christ, and it still is true. There's nothing else. All the things that you give not one iota of that counts for anything unless you give it by the Spirit of Christ. And then what the Father's getting is that sweet savor of Christ through you, not the material thing you're trying to give up. See? And, and even, I mean, even that wording right there, does that, does that mess with anybody? You're trying to give up something, and the true spirit of sacrifice is to give something. To him that satisfies him, not give, oh, God, I just got to get rid of it. Here, take it. You kind of see the difference? You know, it's like, I'm giving, I'm giving this up. I got to get this out of my life. It's going to ruin me, you know, or something, you know. The Lord goes, all right, you know. But where is that sweet savor of Christ? Where is that offering that the Father is just going, this is my beloved son? That's, that's the fragrance of Christ. I know that fragrance anywhere. You see, <clears throat> we do it all without Christ, even thinking of Christ. We give it to Christ, and he's supposed to be the one we give. <laughs> you know, Jesus sitting there with all this stuff in his lap. <laughs> and he's going, look, could you stop this for a while now, and let's just, you know, I'm the offering, okay? <clears throat> I know you're thinking, he's going back. <clears throat> all right. All right, so, so there is... If light chases darkness, which means you can't fix darkness. You cannot fix darkness. Why do we always ask God to fix darkness? Lord, fix my darkness. We never word it that way. We go, you know, fix my husband. <laughs> fix my darkness. Fix my husband. <clears throat> but... In reality, God's not in the business of trying to fix darkness. He's not in the business of trying to patch up the old man, the old nature. He's not. He's not trying to do that. And he's not going to patch up your old man either. <clears throat> <laughs> the laugh gave it away. I couldn't resist. <clears throat> so he just he doesn't do it. So what you know, when Paul's put in that situation. Man, the man is incredible because his compass is so purely focused toward Christ and him crucified. And, and anytime anything comes up, he's just there. So he's, he's dealing, for example, we're talking about the Philippians and he's pointing to Christ and him crucified. And he's pointing to Jesus. 
So in, in Galatia, he's talking there about them and their problems and their legalism and their all this kind of stuff. And he says, he says as the answer, he says, I'm praying. I'm, pre I'm praying. Okay, so we go, okay, well, prayer is the answer. No. No, you know, I mean, again, I saw a bumper sticker that says prayer changes things, and prayer has never changed anything. God changes things. It's like we got this magic thing here called prayer. Okay, this will work. Ooh, watch, watch this. Oh, it works. No, no, this is just us communicating with God. Prayer. Father, that's, that's all prayer is, is communicating with God. Say uh, there's a lot of people who don't pray, but they do talk in the direction of heaven a lot because they're not communicating with God. You know, they're just <laughs> you know. Like, ah, blah, 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 blah. He goes, you know, they're saved, they're part of the bride, but this woman <laughs> just blah blah blah. <laughs> he wants to hear the the reality of his son. He wants Christ glorified in the church. Amen? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So he, so Paul, but Paul says, I'll pray. He goes, I, no, he doesn't just pray. I travail in birth until this situation gets fixed. No, that's good. Good. That's a good one. Yeah, that's not what he said. But that's what, that's what, anybody ever heard people talking about travailing? In prayer? Well, let's just travail in prayer. You know, some of you are too young to know, but there have been, <laughs> there's a period where people, well, I got no problem with that as long as it's based on the same thing because travail in, in every situation I can find in the New Testament, well, even in the Old Testament, because travail was what a woman did to bring forth Christ. I travail in birth until Christ is formed in you. Until Christ is formed in you. That was his answer to their problems. Oh, come on, Paul. We got real issues here. I mean, don't you know people are getting upset? The bunch of people are thinking about leaving the church. You know, and we can't get along here, and we need some real answers. Can't, you're so spiritual, you're no earthly good, Brother Paul. I'll pray Christ is formed in you. We, come on. And yet, light chases away darkness. An increase of Christ will deal with other things, other issues. And in many cases, if it doesn't deal with it, an increase of light in your eyes. Again, you see things the way he sees it, and you go, you know what, that's really not a problem. What did, what did, see, what did Paul say over in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians? He said, this light affliction worketh for me a far more eternal weight of glory while I look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not are eternal. So he's saying, when, when light comes to his eyes, when an increase of light comes, it's almost like, I'm just going to say it like this, this isn't, the fact, but it's almost like this guy that's over here on the cross looking at Jesus going, fix me, fix this, this is not good. It's almost like when light comes, he's actually this guy over here now, and he's going, I want to be with you today. I want to be in oneness with you. I don't want you to fix, I don't, he didn't even ask to come down from the cross, the second guy. He said, get me out of here, I'm with you. That ought to count for something. You know, like we're, come on, pay up, I, I tied. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> ante up, Lord. This isn't a card game. This is the mind of Christ and the, the mindset of Christ. And you look at that thing that you're trying to get out of, and all of a sudden you see it and you say, I can't afford to pray that away. I can't afford that. I need the Lord, and I'm going to need the Lord down the road. And if I prayed that away, it's like, it's like 
running upstairs and trying to skip a step and then falling down several. And now, you, now you're just further behind, you know. No, I need that right there. That's exactly what I need. How are you going to come to that conclusion? Increase of light. Revelation, you're going to have to see as God sees. You're going to have to have dove's eyes, as it says in Song of Solomon. <clears throat> the only thing that will motivate anyone in that direction is that we really want Jesus and we really want him to be able to deal with us any way he is pleased to do so. Anyway, Lord, you know, the dreaded prayer, Lord, whatever it takes. <laughs> because when we say that, we don't have a clue. You know, we call that the dreaded prayer. He says, you know, you don't know how dreaded you are. <laughs> what, what this is going to cost me to have to bring you through all this stuff. But I want my son. I want my son. <clears throat> Amen. So, well, you know, we see that over in uh, Ephesians. Ephesians 5. Let's see, Ephesians 5 and verse 8. <clears throat> for, ye, for ye were once or sometime darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So he says, you once were, you sometime, in the past, what does it say? It says, you were darkness. It doesn't say you were in darkness. You. Well, how many, I mean, just being honest here, how many Christians do you know have ever admitted that they were ever darkness? Okay, but that's what it says. I mean, I didn't. When I first, when I first saw that one, you know, it was like, what? That didn't say I was in darkness because that's the way I was taught it. I was in darkness. I went, oh my God, this is saying I was darkness. This is the, see, it's this kind of stuff that begins to divide the light, the day from the night in our minds, folks. And we begin to see he's the day and I'm the darkness. Okay? Once you start seeing that, it doesn't stay bad, folks. It just, it just changes your focus. Your focus then begins to be, then I need Jesus. And Christians, because this is written to Christians, not sinners. You know. I need Jesus. And you begin to, everything begins to change within you. And your, your focus changes, and, and the things that drive you, and the way that you pray your prayers, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, the scales start coming off. Maybe not all at once for some of us. They start coming off, and we start looking. We start seeing these things. And, it, and the wording is, folks, my God, the wording is, it's excellent. It's excellent. For you were once darkness, and here's us, but now we're light. But it doesn't say that. It says you were sometime darkness. You were once darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk. As children of light. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we're back to the we're back to the Philippians and the problems they're having and people being you know not getting along and all this kind of stuff. And Paul is looking at them and he's thinking, <clears throat> we're you're not walking as children of light. You're walking as children of darkness. You're walking as if you're darkness that needs fixing. Lord, fix my darkness. And again, he doesn't fix it. Light never fixes darkness. It removes it. Turn that light on, poof. It's going, it doesn't go, oh, I'm light now, I'm clean. You know, 
what I mean? That's kind of the way, you know, most Christian, you know, especially new Christians, like, oh, I was darkness and now I'm clean. No, now you're dead. <clears throat> but you're alive in the Lord. You're alive in the Lord. And the Lord is your life. For to me to live is Christ. <clears throat> But it's more than that, and this, I mean, he's taking it a step further when he says, we were once darkness, now we're light in the Lord. You need to start walking as those who perceive that this, these things you're calling darkness are our workers. This light affliction works for us. That's what it says. It works for us. Okay, well, we're... What church are you going to hear that in? <clears throat> what Bible are you going to hear that in? Everybody's? Every church? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it's not a question of what have they taught or what have we heard. It's only a question of what God says. And he says, look, that's working for you. Walk as children of the light. In other places it says children of the day. Children of the day. And in that place he says, Awake thou that sleepest. And then he says, Arise from the dead. Okay. <clears throat> so it's, you have to awake first before you can arise. You, there can be no resurrection if, you're, if Jesus is just hanging on the cross and everything goes dark and God forsakes him and he says, my God, why is thou forsaken me? And all of his disciples have run away and people, the only people around him basically that he can see or certainly hear are people mocking him. Well, yeah, son of God, come down from the cross. I mean, it's not just the Pharisees and everything else. It's the guys on both sides, you know, you know it's the guys around him and all this kind of stuff. And it's it's all of this. Everything looks dark. It's, it is dark. The sun was blotted out for, what was it, six hours, something like that. Jesus' final words is, just forgive them. They don't know what's going on here. I'm not being murdered. You know, Mary, his mother, is crying. My son has come to this. He's, he's, this is his end. He's, he's come to this, being the savior of the whole world. No, she didn't say that. She didn't look at it and go, oh my God, this is the greatest moment ever. She's weeping and going, my, my son, not, not the son, not the father's son. Come on, just think about it. You know, my son. And Jesus said, well, we'll fix that. John, you take her. His mom, you take her son. There we go. Okay. Now, if you're going to know me, you're going to know me as the father's son. You know, we'll fix this for him out of here. <laughs> you know, it is dark. You'll, you will be brought to a place of darkness all around, and you're going to have to walk as children of light. You're going to have to know what the real issues are. You're going to have to see. You're going to have to rejoice when others would be freaking out, and you're going to have to embrace what others would go, ah, you know, that's the devil. But how will that come about? When the heart turns to the Lord. Only, only those who want to know who the Lord is. Not what he can do for me, but who he is. And he's a lamb. And the lamb overcame every ounce of darkness that ever hit this planet. And the lamb 
was exalted. We'll get into that. We're going to get when when we get into that there in Philippians, we're going to take a long time to talk about that because you talk about misconceptions about the resurrection. We're going to see from the scriptures. God sees everything so different than we do. We know the scripture. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we all go, yeah. So we assume that we know that because we know that. You know what I mean? We know that scripture. So we go, well, I know the scripture, so it's got to be true. God, why don't you, you know, what are you doing? We don't go, well, his ways are not our ways. So this, you know, I guess we need to plug into his mind to see this. We usually go, what is, you know, you see what I'm saying? We have this nice little package of doctrines that we believe until we get into situations where we need them and then it's not really even doctrines it's just fluff but when the spirit of god begins to deal with you about christ and him crucified when the spirit of god starts breaking through your darkness you won't see jesus of nazareth you will see the Lamb. You will see him for who he is. Amen. Okay, well, let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for his abiding with us. We thank you for you abiding with us, that you would never leave us nor forsake us but you would take us into circumstances where if we didn't know better, we would feel forsaken. And all of our doctrine of you'll never leave us or forsake us will disappear as we fret and as we weep and as we resist embracing you in the ways that we've been taught and moving those things from doctrine to truth, to truth to life, to life to fullness of Christ, fullness of Christ crucified. So we look to you. We are, Father, we are your children. We are, we are bone of Jesus' bone, flesh of his flesh. So we ask you to father us, father us. Take our little hands as little children and lead us into the day. For the path of the righteous is like the new day, it gets brighter and brighter. We ask you to do it in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're dismissed.